Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Alexa Farragine. And I'm Dominique DiNardo, and here's your news now. Cabrini College now has partnerships with 13 area high schools, so high school students can take college-level credit for classes. We got to learn about how it is beneficial to the students. What we do here for the, with educational partnerships at Cabrini is we offer opportunities for high school students to take um, college level classes on their high school campus or they are invited um, to take classes here on the Cabrini campus. But specifically we have about six or seven um, different high schools that are their own cohort on their campus taught by uh, Cabrini instructors. Uh, all different things, so from science, uh, we have science classes, leadership classes, um, education, so we're offering lots of different opportunities. So Dr. David Dunbar has taught a class um, on uh, the Bonner and Prendy campus. He taught the Genetics and Heredities course. Um, and Dr. Carrie Nelson also taught on the Bonner and Prendy campus. She taught in uh, environmental science. Coming up this summer, uh, Dr. Stephanie Colbury is going to be teaching on O'Hara's campus the um, leadership course. And also uh, Jill Smith will be teaching a communications course at O'Hara um, in the fall. And then we have different adjuncts that are not um, part of the immediate Cabrini community, um, but have joined us. You know, it's, it's very exciting for me. Um, I have a long history of education uh, from, you know, that I'm involved in. But watching high school students see the light go on when they realize that they can do college level work is really very exciting. Um, it makes me feel like they have a better shot when they come to that college campus, um, that they'll feel more successful because they'll know at least part of what the expectation is uh, when they get there. So I guess the best part for me is that I really get to see the high school students um, be enlightened. Radnor residents, keep your eyes open for a new indoor dog park. Renovations are almost complete for Radnor Veterinary Hospital Indoor Dog Park. According to Patch.com, the new center will feature a soft grass carpet for your special dogs to enjoy. The new facility will be open Monday to Friday from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. In an alleged domestic violence incident, 26-year-old Delaware County police officer Mark Hudson has been killed, according to Patch.com. Hudson died of a gunshot wound to the chest. It was reported by Philly.com that this was not a suicide. According to MainlineMediaNews.com, a Philadelphia woman has been charged for attempting to join the terrorist group ISIS. Kiona Thomas has been found trying to research how to indirectly travel to Turkey, which has been known for a primary route for people attempting to travel to Spain and Europe. If convicted, Thomas faces up to 15 years in prison. Cabrini has decided to diversify its campus, increasing its Latino enrollment to 25% by 2020. President Donald Taylor comments on this topic and why it is vital for Cabrini to do so by 2020. So uh, many of you have heard about in the, my inaugural address, I talked about Cabrini and our 2020 vision to be a more of a Hispanic serving institution. And it, that's consistent with the mission of the college was founded by Mother Ursula, descendant of Mother Cabrini. And Mother Cabrini was the first patroness saint of immigrants. So in the 50s, when Mother Ursula was recruiting students, um, she again, she took Mother Cabrini's words at heart and she wanted to, the school to offer an education of the heart to Italian American immigrants, Irish American immigrants, and now you fast forward 60 years, and the U.S. being a large melting pot, those populations have been replaced largely now by Latino and Asian Americans. You know, uh, my job and the, and the job of my admission staff is to really um, begin to strategize on how we can best recruit this growing demographic of Hispanic students, um, which means, you know, regionally, how are we going to get there? Nationally, what do we need to do? And internationally. And so um, I think we have a lot of opportunities, especially given the fact that, you know, we have a network of Cabrini high schools across the globe and so um, really focusing on our strategies and, and helping the institution realize how we're going to get to that 25 percent is what we're here for. In the Northeast the demographics of high school graduating seniors Caucasians are declining by almost 18 percent, uh, African American populations declining by around 10 percent, the Hispanic population of high school graduates is projected to increase 25 percent in the next 10 years and the Asian American population by 42 percent. In order for an institution to be categorized as a, um, a Hispanic serving institution, you have to have 25 percent 
Hispanic enrollment. And so that's where that's coming from. So, and so in order for us to achieve that, we have to get to that target. Well, currently we are at 4% um, Hispanic students. So we did have a slight increase um, from 2008, but we definitely have um, some room to grow. When I first started, I received a publication from Mayor Nutter's office, City of Philadelphia, and it, it talked about the changing demographics of the greater Philadelphia area. In the last 10 years, the Latino population has increased 97% in the greater Philadelphia area. And when we did an environmental scan and we looked and I met with a variety of Latino business leaders, uh, the CEO of Aldea News and others, uh, I met with Reverend Luis Cortez, the CEO of Esperanza, and they didn't really feel that there were, uh, the colleges and universities were really being strategic and doing outreach to serving those populations of students. Most of them are first generation, so they face a number of obstacles. And so we're, we're starting our international recruitment efforts by working in the countries where the missionary sisters that sponsor the college have K through 12 schools in, in predominantly Spanish speaking countries. Uh, we're looking to set up study abroad sites for our Cabrini students, but also for those high school students in Argentina or Spain, they want to come to the U.S. because the U.S. has the greatest higher education college university system. It's the envy of the world. And we need to at least be their first choice. And that was your trip around the block. Let's check in with Howard Blake to see what's new in sports. To everyone's surprise, the Kentucky Wildcats are not this year's NCAA national champions. It was the Duke Blue Devils and Wisconsin Badgers that battled for the national championship. After a hard-fought performance by Frank Kaminsky and the Badgers, the play of Tyus Jones down the stretch lifted the Blue Devils to the 68-63 victory. It was Coach K's fifth national championship, now ranking him second all-time. The men's lacrosse team took on the Rosemont Ravens, and it wasn't much of a contest. The blue and white destroyed the Ravens 22-2. Freshman James McNani led the team with five goals, but it was Damian Sobieski who stole the show, becoming the seventh player in school history to record his 200th point. The softball team recorded their sixth shutout of the season after defeating Gwinnett Mercy University 6 to nothing. The blue and white are being led by senior Steph Deagle, who has a .464 batting average to go along with three home runs on the year. They are now 12-5 overall. And that was this week's sports news. Let's send it back to Dominique at the news desk. After 148 people were killed on the attack on Garissa University, Kenya is retaliating. Already bombing two Al-Shabaab camps on the border of Somalia, President Uru Kenyatta claimed to be making these response attacks as severe as possible. Prince Harry of Wales arrived in Australia earlier this week to fulfill his military duty. According to CNN, the prince will be traveling through Sydney alongside other Australian army men. Upon arrival, Prince Harry was greeted by many supportive fans. The prince also denied a fan a selfie and told him to stop taking them. Selfies are bad. Antarctica recently recorded record high temperatures. Although 63.5 degrees does seem mild to Americans, it's not common for the cold continent on the bottom of the world. Equipment is under intense investigation to make sure that it is recording properly due to the rarity of this temperature. Cabrini is a diverse community, and within it, there are several professors who are from native uh, different countries. Explore how they bring their culture into their styles of teaching and how they are leaving their mark on Cabrini's community. I'm originally from Argentina. I came here 42 years ago as a 21-year-old and have been here ever since. I got my education here. I've been uh, teaching for 25 years. and. Um, what do I bring from my uh, background to my teaching is, um, I hope, an openness to, uh, to the world. I stay in touch with, with my, uh, my country and um, with all of Latin America. Um, I think that in terms of what I bring to the classroom that I would think of as the sort of uniquely South African thing that I bring to the classroom. I guess I would say 
One of the things is a kind of openness and frankness. So I certainly, you know, in South Africa, no, nothing is off limits conversationally, and I try to bring that into the classroom. Check out the full roll-in on Location's official YouTube channel. And those were this week's big issues. Let's check in with Morgan Williams for your entertainment update. Cabrini's great location allows students to explore surrounding towns such as Wayne and King of Prussia. The area gives the students a wide variety of activities to do, stores to shop, and restaurants to eat at. Well, my friends and I like to go to the mall sometimes. Um, I really like going to Wayne like on the weekends, especially when the, the weather is nicer out. Um, being that there's the movie tickets here are like $4, uh, it's convenient to go to the movies. Sometimes I go to Sky Zone, um, sometimes I go to the movies, sometimes I go to uh, rock climbing. A lot of time I go to a pie in the sky, Wawa, Walmart. A lot of times I also go to the, um, the mall, stuff like that. Places that are pretty close. Uh, whenever I go off campus, I use the Cabrini shuttle and I go to the mall sometimes. Um, I go to Walmart, I go to Wawa sometimes. So uh, yeah, if you don't have a car on campus, uh, you, always, you always have your friends, like if you make friends with older people, they have cars or you have the, the shuttles always take you to places around here. So even if you don't have access to a vehicle, the great thing is Cabrini offers you a van that takes you places. So everything's within distance. When I was a freshman, I used the shuttle a lot just because my friends didn't have cars. But now basically a lot of them uh, do have cars. So it's just easier to ask them. Having a shuttle is really good for the school because it gives kids freedom to do other stuff. and not. So uh, Wayne, you have the main line, you have uh, like a El Matador and you have cilantro like two Mexican cuisine places and you have the movie theater that's right there you also have Wawa that's right there and then also you have the King of Prussia Mall which has everything in there anything you could possibly want right there at your fingertips is great. Going to Walmart actually being that it's only like five minutes away it's a lot convenient uh, to go there if I want to like stock up like if I just want like a snack I'll just go to Wawa. Whenever I need to go shopping, I always go to Walmart. Uh, when I was a freshman and I didn't have a car on campus, I always used the shuttle. They drove me there, and then all you have to do is wait for the shuttle to get back, pick you up, and take you back home. It's really, really easy, really convenient, and Walmart's cheap. Is Miley Cyrus crazy, or is it just me? Okay, so Miley Cyrus posts pictures of IV needles in her arm and jokingly states that she is a drugs junkie. But in reality, she was getting vitamins put in her blood. Miley speaks about marijuana and how it is better than alcohol. She is happy to live in California where weed is legal, and she can be whoever she wants to be. She states that marijuana and Miley are happy and social drugs. What do you think about this topic? Should Miley have a seat? I think so. Talk about Kendall and Kylie Jenner's relationship as sisters is pretty interesting. They are not the average 17 and 19 year olds you see every day. These two have a tendency to flirt and make sexual comments towards each other, which I think is kind of weird. I mean, no, I am not saying there is more, sister, more than sisterhood going on here. I'm just saying that they are definitely different than most. With social media outlets, Kendall and Kylie like to show off a little too much sexual tension. At one point on Snapchat, Kylie had her hand down Kendall's pants. I don't know. This just gets more and more confusing every time I think of these two. On the other hand, speaking of crazies, Kanye West has gone off his rocker. He decided that he would recreate the Bible and name it the Book of Jesus. According to E! News, he replaced every mention of God's name and replaced it with his own name. It is made to celebrate Kanye West as a mega icon. What is this? I think this is crazy considering that Easter just passed. What do you think about this topic? Would you read this book? Tweet us at Location News to tell us your opinion. Celine Brown is not new to Gabrini. He isn't alone. After graduation, he came back to work for the basketball team. Now he has a new position with the first year experience. Let's take a look. I love my job now. You know, I, I, um, you know, I love helping students out. I think, you know, I promote Cabrini so much because I lived here. I, I, I went to the same classes, lived in the same dorm. Um, so I'm always promoting Cabrini College whether, um, to high school students, students who are not here yet, but mainly to keep the students here on campus. because I think it's a great place, and I think that it's a, a place where students can excel and be who they want to be. Uh, the associate director of first year experience, that's my uh, current job as of right now. Um, and I was approached um, 
came out on the website, he approached by, uh, talked to Richie Gabauer, who was the director of First Year Experience, and I seen him as uh, someone, a great person to work with, very smart, very knowledgeable, uh, outgoing person, and I thought that he would be someone that I would love to work with. Um, and he's a guy that, you know, lets me be Salim Brown, and that's when I'm at my best. Over the last 10 years, Salim has worked here at the college in a variety of capacities. And I think in his previous 10 years working within admissions, I think he's had uh, the wonderful opportunity to connect with so many students on a variety of levels. And you can see that when he walks around campus, how welcoming students feel when they're interacting with him. And I think that is a huge reason why he's recruited so many students here at Cabrini. I know that, you know, working with Richie, I can go to that next level now uh, in my career. And I know that he's going to back me 100% and push me the way I need to be pushed to, to be successful uh, in helping these students here at Cabrini College, but, only, but helping myself as well grow professionally. In his recent transition into the first year experience, I think he's he feels as if he's had that really great opportunity to connect with students on their way in, and now um, he has that ability to use his strong leadership and communication skills to really work with our students once they're here and help them successfully navigate themselves through the first year experience. I think the best experience I have besides making all the friends that I have today was just, you know, the one-on-one -on -one personal touch that I got from whether it was the faculty and staff here on campus. They really believed in me, which made me believe in myself. To get back to, you know, I just love helping people here, you know, and I think that I give my all every day uh, and this position allows me to do that to stay on campus to give my all to these students because there could be someone out there who wants to do what I want to do and so that's why I don't take any shortcuts. I work as hard as I can um, because I want the next person who might replace me somewhere down the road to do the same thing for the next student line. Well that was your entertainment update. Now let's head over to the news desk. Is it just me or do you think Miley Cyrus is doing this for attention? I'm over her. I don't even want to talk about her anymore. Me yeah, too. I agree. After Hannah Montana, didn't care. Yeah. Yeah, it's really surprising, and it's not the Hannah Montana that I know. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all we have for you this week on Location News. Make sure you're staying up to date with us on our social media platform. Simply search Location News. Now let's see what's coming up next week on Location News. Have a great week, Cabrini. Next time on Location News. We cover Cabrini's Accepted Students Day. Then we have an interview with NAACP President Cornell Brooks. Followed by coverage of Cabrini's golf team. And then we interview a representative from CRS.